What do you guys know about the Soviet society? What was its view on the Asian martial arts and why were they considered taboo? Ah yes, the good old 1960s, a time when the cars in the Soviet Union were almost as rare as they are now in North Korea. It was then when for the first time the Soviet public has been introduced to the phenomena of the East Asian martial arts. In 1960s, when judo has officially became an Olympic sport, the USSR rushed forward to create their first judo team for the representation at the Tokyo Olympics. During that event, the USSR was able to score four bronze medals. Since then, the Soviet Union's dedication and performance at the Olympic events has been only increasing, and a special dedication was given to judo, since it was an art which was unfamiliar to them. They were familiar with classical wrestling and Greco-Roman wrestling, over judo, has been a tough opponent to tackle. No pun intended. This was the first spark that has started an uncontrollable fire that has been burning all the way to 1980s. With the introduction of judo, the interest in other martial arts soon followed suit, and in the blink of an eye, arts such as karate, aikido, and ushu have started to gain interest among the Soviet citizens. The first people who actually brought any real knowledge or literature about the martial arts to the Soviet Union were the students at the Moscow University. The international students from the Moscow University came from all over the world. Some of them were even Japanese, who possessed real karate experience. However, the communication with the foreigners were often dodgy at best, and many instructions were clearly misunderstood. There was also a chance that many of these international students were riding on the hype and openly falsified their mastery or even invented their own stories to seem stronger and cooler. The martial arts manuals that they have left behind were always in foreign languages, so the enthusiastic Soviet guys had to spend countless hours at their local library trying to decipher the meaning. In many cases, they simply misunderstood the original meaning completely and instead followed their intuition, however they have completely missed out the philosophical aspects, due to their often metaphorical interpretations which often cannot be interpreted by a word-to-word -word translation. As a result of skipping the peaceful philosophical aspect, many people wanted to try out their skills in real-life situations often looking for a fight on purpose, which has significantly increased the number of street fights and gang-on-gang -gang violence. Due to the Soviet Union being a police state, they have quickly responded to such violence and have banned all the non-Olympic martial arts, threatening with five up to ten years of imprisonment if caught teaching or practicing. However, by doing this, they have given martial arts an even more hidden, mythical and forbidden image. Knowing anything at all about the mysterious Asian martial arts would make you into a local legend. This in turn created a culture of power and manliness, with many guys telling tales about the friend of the friend who has done this or done that, which in turn has made martial arts even more popular. As a result, it has attracted many frauds that were willing to take money for their teaching. It has started to resemble a private business, which was banned by the communism. They claimed to possess a secret knowledge, and that for the right price and secrecy they were willing to share it. In order to avoid the attention of the police and the public, many of such practices were carried out late at night, from 2 to 5 am. People were crazily dedicated and were willing to sacrifice hours of sleep just to learn the mystical art. The stories of martial arts in the Soviet Union are truly fascinating to me, and I'm thinking about making a whole series about it. If you enjoy the content and you would like to know more, please subscribe to my channel. So guys, see you in my next video. Remember to stay strong, stay healthy, and to never neglect knowledge. Peace out.